Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is purchasing controls. Aaron Snyder here for Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and check out the introduction. You can look at the video description below for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we will cover. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda, which consists of four items. You can see those in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end for the three bonus questions. Our topic, purchasing controls, comes directly from 820.50 and 1345 sections 4.1.5 and 7.4. Purchasing controls in five words. Use only approved suppliers. When it comes to purchasing controls, there is an excellent GHTF document on purchasing controls. I recommend that you go get it and read it. In 1345, the term outsource processes is also used in place of purchasing controls. We can outsource any part of our quality management system. And if we choose to outsource something that is managed by our quality management system, we're going to have to review and approve that supplier before we actually use them. That review and approval is called supplier qualification. During the supplier qualification process, we have to make sure that that supplier can meet our quality requirements. In doing that, we also have to get the supplier to assign and agree to a no change agreement. Once that supplier is qualified, we have to monitor their performance to ensure that they continue to fulfill our quality requirements. So how do I know this is working? Well, first I have a procedure for how I qualify suppliers. Second, all of my suppliers, including my material suppliers, my service suppliers, and my consultants, they are reviewed and approved before I use them. Third, my suppliers, they communicate changes to me first and I review and approve them before they are implemented. And then finally, my supplier qualification files are complete and they're up to date. How do I know this is not working? Well, first, I'm using suppliers that aren't approved. Second, suppliers make changes and don't tell you about them. And you only find out about the changes through post-market data or quality failures within your process. And then finally, supplier files, they are incomplete, they are out of date, or they just don't exist. Now for those three bonus questions. First, how do we qualify a new supplier? Second, how are supplier changes managed? Who do they have to communicate to? And ultimately, how is it reviewed and approved? And then finally, how do we monitor the supplier's performance? And how do we communicate that performance to the supplier? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.